For those users who want to build confidence in their use of the Wally Skater and increase the overall safety of the cantilever, you can use the stylus guard of your cartridge and keep it in place during the measurement process, but you will have to be certain that you have set your targeted vertical tracking force with the stylus guard in place. Do not tear the mass of the stylus guard. Its mass will influence the results of the Wally Skater test and therefore should be part of the VTF measurement. Also, it, it remains important to have your stylus, not the bottom of your stylus guard, two to three millimeters from the platter during the measurements. This is particularly important with twin arms that have a center of gravity that's nowhere near the horizontal pivot of the arm, such as in all unipivots or Kuzma's four-point bearing designs. So you'll have to get that stylus guard even closer to the platter to get an accurate reading. We highly suggest measuring your tone arm's performance using the Wally Skater once every six months. If your arm has an exposed loop of wire like the one in the previous video, you should consider doing so even more often. We find that there is a strong relationship between the rigidity of the tone arm wire used by the manufacturer and the variability of the tone arm's measured performance throughout the year as temperatures in the listening room vary and the wires near the bearing area relax. Metals in the wire and the wire insulation itself have a memory of how they were oriented at the time of extrusion. This memory can cause the wires to unfurl and shift slowly over time, transferring a force to the arm wand that's measurable as a horizontal torque force. The more rigid the wiring, the more variability you are likely to see over time. The more supple the wires are, the more stable the arm tends to behave over the long term. If you removed a platter mat prior to the use of the Wally Skater, then you can use the extra thickness of the mat to get a higher clearance of the stylus above the platter at the time of measurement. For example, if your platter mat is two millimeters thick, then instead of adjusting the stylus height to be two to three millimeters above the platter at the time of measurement, you can increase it by the two millimeters thickness of the mat and use four to five millimeters total distance above the platter. Readings of 16% and over are technically off the scales of accurate measurement. The Wally Skater loses accuracy significantly beyond this point. Fortunately, there is no horizontal force in this range that we would allow for in our tone arm anyway. If your tone arm is expressing forces out here and you have truly confirmed levelness of the arm board and still cannot do anything about it, get it back to the manufacturer for repair. This pulley type anti-scape mechanism is reasonably common. You will note that the weight on this armature wants to fall straight down with gravity and pull the string down with it, causing the force to be imparted to the tone arm as it should be. However, the closer this armature is to being at 12 o'clock or at 6 o'clock, the less the mass of the bias weight is transferred to the string. In this situation, the force is transferred directly onto the pulley's pivot axis, which means that none of its mass can be translated into a rotational force and therefore cannot be expressed as an anti-skate force. The goal is to allow this armature to be as close as possible to 3 o'clock or 9 o'clock as the arm travels over as much of the record surface as possible. If in case it is not, for example, the armature may be at 3 o'clock at the outer area of the record, but 1 o'clock at the inner area. If this occurs, then see if you have a mechanism that can allow this pulley to be, move, to be moved closer or further away from the tone arm. Um, perhaps your mechanism allows for you to vary the length of the string. In any case, try to get that mechanism to impart its force more consistently across the record by keeping the armature as close as possible to 3 o'clock or 9 o'clock. No, it is not true, as is commonly claimed, that skating force constantly decreases or increases as the arm plays at various radius. I've heard both claims. As we've discussed in our blog, skating force does change depending upon playing radius, but it does so in a parabolic function, meaning it starts out at its highest at the outer area of the record, and it lowers until you reach about 90 millimeters radius 
and then starts to get stronger again. Perhaps the most confusing and frustrating situation is having a tone arm that expresses both high internal horizontal torque force and a high static friction. Such arms should be sent back to the factory for repair, but in many cases, owners will not be in a position to do that. So, how to manage this issue best as you can? Here's an example of an arm that exhibits both of these characteristics. Of course, the anti-escape mechanism is turned off for this test, and here we see the arm wants to push outwards, but taking a reading of this horizontal force is made difficult by the fact that the high static friction causes it to appear to measure that horizontal torque at anywhere from 5%, 6%, 8%, and more. There is a way to determine the static friction and the internal horizontal torque of an arm independently by simply finding the outermost and innermost points in the swing where the arm will stay in position. The difference between these two figures is your static friction, and the average of these two figures is your internal horizontal torque force. On this arm, you can see the innermost limit where the arm will stay put is at 4%, and the outermost limit is 10%. That is a difference of a total of 6%. This is the static friction of the arm, 6%, as measured at the inner area of the platter. Now the average of 4% and 10% is 7%. This is your tone arm's internal horizontal torque force. Both of these figures are out of the acceptable range, of course, and will debilitate your cartridge's damper, affecting sonic performance. Now, perform this same test at the outer area of the platter and compare results. Feel free to reach out to us if this situation applies to you. We'd like to know about it, and perhaps we can help guide you through the process. The more resolving your system is, the more you will appreciate the improvement in sonic performance when your tone arm's horizontal forces are under control. I know what many of you are thinking. My rig sounds great right now, so I don't need to measure my tone arm's performance. Well, fine, don't. <laughs> I can't count how many times this tool has surprised vinyl files with its ability to improve sonic performance. If you don't wonder, if you've paid for better performance than what you're now enjoying, then perhaps it isn't for you. But I can tell you that when everything is working as it should, you can expect your musical performance to sound much more relaxed non-mechanical sounding, and the imaging and sound staging will come into better focus, overall clarity will improve, sibilance will often decrease, and your chances of hearing mistracking will be near zero. As always, please reach out to us if you have any questions, and be sure to enjoy Analog Forever. <laughs>